Okay, I'm Jeff. I'm going to be demonstrating an open source modeling program called G-Sculpt that uh, I've been developing for the last uh, several years. Uh, the program's still in alpha, so it's a bit buggy and it might crash a bit and may even crash during the demonstration, so uh, please bear with that if that happens. Um, there are some of the features I'm going to demonstrate here may well already be in Blender, so if so, uh, apologies for my lack of Blender knowledge. Um, here's a bullet point list of the main features that I'm going to be demonstrating. Um, I've got some ideas about the background images system that sometimes help if you're doing uh, head modeling. Um, G-Sculpt supports uh, pre-selection highlighting throw, which can be quite useful as a workflow assistance. Um, the tools to give quite a lot of feedback is about, about what's going to happen when you apply the tool. Uh, I'm also going to demonstrate the tweak tool, the fine adjustment system, some mesh tools that I'm fairly happy with, and the procedural workflow. Um, uh, where, where is it? The background images in, in G-Sculpt are 3D planes, and they can posi be positioned, scaled, and rotated uh, independently. And here's the warning about alpha software. That one will do. So the background images can be moved around as you see fit in 3D space. Um, you can also rotate them as you wish and scale them, to scale them as well. This allows you to take, uh, if you've got, say, the front and side views of a head, you can position them and align them with one another, which can be fairly helpful. It's, it's slightly different from the way I, I'm not, I often use, quite, use Max Fair, but so it's quite different from the way you often put the image in the back in the viewport. So sometimes that might mean you don't have to uh, rotate and scale the image inside the GIMP or whatever before you use it. G-Scott has uh, pre-selection highlighting throughout. As you move the mouse over the model, the various vertices, edges, or faces will be highlighted before you select them. This can sometimes assist in helping the user not make mistakes with regard to choosing what they wish. So you can just move around, select, and then click something, extrude, pull it out. I've tried to design quite a lot of the tools so they produce, give quite a lot of feedback as to what's going to happen. So if you use the bandsaw tool, which is equivalent of adding a, an edge loop, um, as you can see, as you, as you scan around, it shows what's going to happen before it actually puts them in. Um, there's also the cut tool, which uh, some people uh, quite like, using, in that you can, you can insert cuts as you, as you wish. inside the face. Uh, the tweak tool allows you to quickly modify a mesh so you can change the shape. This is particularly useful for head modeling. It's got pre-selection highlighting. You can switch between component types quickly. And it's got constraints. I mean, this may well already even be in Blender. And so you can quickly just click and drag. Um, you can, by using control and control or shift in the mouse wheel, you can select the types of, uh, of components. You can also move entire rings around. Um, you can also you can also quickly select constraints as well. So if you don't if you only want to move it in a certain plane, you can do so. <laughs> Uh, 
I often found that when modeling uh, some various uh, objects, including some of the work I do for architectural visualization, it helps to have uh, sort of fine adjustments. And sometimes, uh, if, you, if you only want to move it a very small amount, like a few pixels, it can be uh, sometimes it can be difficult. Particularly is if, particularly if like me, you've got a bit of a RSI problem. You have to want to have one of those special mice, like a pen mouse or one of those vertical mice, moving, moving, making very fine movements can be difficult. So by using the middle button. You can click and you can drag, and it'll move it by a much smaller amount, so it scales down the movement by 20 times. I find that to be quite helpful for making uh, fine adjustments to a model. Finally, here are some uh, here are some mesh tools which can be quite useful. The target well is probably probably already in uh, Blender, but you can just uh, weld vertices to one another quickly. Oops. Uh, rewire edges. Uh, this can be this can be quite helpful because often often we uh, wish to uh, do edge spinning, where we can spin an edge around. But with the rewire edges, you can you just uh, choose a point and then you just drag it to the other other place on other place on a, a new a new, ver new target vertex. We also got the tunnel tool where you can select multiple faces. I think uh, this is this is this is in Blender now via a plugin, but you can just uh, tunnel between them. I saw this demonstrated as a plugin this afternoon, so that's already there. Path set path selecting edges can be quite useful because eventually we can just go around and it finds the shortest path between the two points. Or loop path is often quite useful. There's also the knife tool, which effect, which uh, allows you to quickly just slice through a mesh like that. Is that in Blender yet? Uh, um, it's in it's in uh, Max and uh, Cinema 4D, I think. I don't know. I haven't. I'm not sure if it's in Blender. And finally, I'll demonstrate the uh, procedural workflow. Now, GSCOP stores the procedure required to make the model. Oops. Uh, as opposed to storing the actual uh, vertices, edges, and polygons that uh, make up the model. So we can go back here and we go back to the initial box. And we can go down the procedure. So effectively, the entire procedure required to rebuild the model f from scratch is stored in the file. Now, this would be pretty good for tutorials, because literally all you have to do is build your model, and GSCOP will store your procedure in, in the file. And then you just give that to a student, and uh, they can then see exactly how you built the model. Um, one of the things I've noticed is when people make tutorials on the internet, they have to build the model quite carefully and take screenshots as they go so they can put it on the web and annotate it with text. Well, with this program, you can make the model and then you can deliberately just go through here, uh, pick a point, take a screenshot, write about it, pick another point in the procedure, take a screenshot, write about it. So it'll make, uh, it should make uh, tutorial, uh, making tutorials quite a lot easier. And also, I thought I'd do a quick demonstration of how to fix, uh, fix, fix modeling mistakes. Uh, let's restart again. I'm afraid that is a bit of a bug. Reloading thing, reloading, uh, loading a new project file, and sometimes causes the layer system to screw up. So. Oops, this is bloody nice. Right, I do. Here's just a very, very simple house type mesh that I uh, knot together in about uh, 30 seconds. So we might start by s selecting this face here, and then say maybe doing a sort of roof structure.
Now you'll notice that here is the big mistake in this mesh, in that beforehand we had these cuts, we had these uh, split, verti split vertices here, which have now been propagated up by the bevel, and now we've got the, uh, the mesh sort of turned inside out. Now we could go in and use loop remove, remove edge loops, but there's another way. You see in here the construction procedure is stored up here, so we find out where we selected the face. And before we select the face, we just maybe use uh, target world to send these to there, send that to there, uh, use the cut tool, connect that, and we'll maybe take these edges here, dissolve them. Oops, there's a mouse. And uh, now we just... <laughs> and it's fixed. We can, go, we can probably go a little further than that. We can go up and find out where we originally, before we put all the, wind, we put all the shapes in, we'll just go back to this face here. So we say, oh, say, we, just, say we decided at the end that our uh, house is a, bit, a little bit too deep. Once again, we'll just push this in a bit. And then we just modify our bevel procedures to prevent it from turning itself inside out. <coughs> and we're done. Um, so yeah, I've demonstrated the procedural workflow, but I think that's pretty much it. Uh, as for future developments, uh, there are a few more tools I want to add. Um, I demonstrated the tweak tool, which allows quick moving of vertices, edges, and polygons around. I'd like to fix that such that, like in soft image, it has a method such that you can move it along the normal or across the surface as well. Um, I know there's a feature in Max which allows you to constrain moving points to uh, in faces or along edges, so I wouldn't mind putting that in. Um, other possible features are, for example, say a, a VCR-style interface that would allow you to play back a construction procedure. Um, also, allowing the, a tutorial maker to annotate the construction procedure. That way, you could have an entire tutorial, including all the description of what's going on inside, all inside the program. That could potentially be quite helpful. Um, I think that's about it. Thank you very much. <laughs>